Hey, what's going on guys? It's Mike with Sunny Slope Homestead. Today, I am going to try something very new. And I am going to try to make a video, not do so much editing. It's been a busy week. I'm a little strapped for time. And I'm a little late on making a video. So, I want to put something out there to show you the progress of these meat chickens. Because I am really concerned when we go to butcher, we're not going to have a very big chicken to send to the processor. So, we're going to go check out these chickens real quick. Hey, if you haven't subscribed already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I got a notice uh, on my analytics that about 89% of my viewers aren't subscribed. So, it's kind of weird. So, all right. Let's check on these chickens. Oh, boy. Sorry. I just got done eating some chow. And we've been dealing with the goats lately. We got this thing going on with the goats right now. Or one of them with patches where he can't use the restroom. And I forgot, forgot the medical term for it. But I had to go flip him on his side and snip this little thing. I think it was called a, a whiz or fizz or whatever. I can't remember. Pizzle. That's what they call it. Call it a pizzle. So I had to snip this thing off so he can go to the bathroom. So... We've just been dealing with that and trying to keep an eye on him, making sure that he's okay. But, uh-oh. Sorry, I'll continue on this story, but I just realized these chickens don't have water. And I'll show you why. So one thing I noticed about these waterers, my boy put this on way too tight, is if you put them on too tight, the water won't come out. Because it works off a of vacuum. And they got some thirsty chickens here. Come huh, on, guys. They haven't been like this all day, though. That's the good news. Only since about 4 o'clock, and that's only been about 2-3 hours. Alright. So I just put this thing on loose. Yeah, I found that water dry a few times. These birds are pretty resilient, though. And we check on them religiously, so they're never without water if they do have an issue for very long. So let's check these guys out. This guy right here, he is creepy. Look, he's completely blind in that one eye. This is my good eye. What do you guys think? You think we're going to be ready in a week? You think we'll at least have some four-pound birds? We do have one bird I think we're going to keep. We're not going to send him to the processor. Or him, her. But this bird, this bird gets a pass. Because look how tiny it is. It's a tiny guy. That one, he's not worth sending to the processor. He's too tiny. He's like a little Cornish hen. So, he gets to become part of the plot, uh, flock. I don't know if it's a boy or girl yet, but I hope it's a girl because these guys will lay eggs, I think. You let them live long enough. Uh, here's another thing I found out. I think I found out the reason why my chickens aren't growing that much. They said six weeks, these chickens will eat 12 pounds of food per chicken. I bought exactly that amount of, of uh, chow for all these. They've been on 24-hour feed <clears throat> and... Usually you run into the syndrome where they get so much protein, they get so heavy, their body can't be supported by their legs. And I haven't had any of these problems. But then again, they haven't been eating as much as normal meat birds eat. And I don't know why, and I thought maybe their, their breed was a little off or something like that. But uh, what I found out is they don't really particularly like eating out of this style feeder. This feed that I have is like a sawdust material. I'm going to shut this radio off because I don't want any issues with copyright or anything like that. Oh, yeah. That radio has been working pretty well, too, for keeping raccoons away. We had a little bit of an incident. We'll get in that a little bit later. Not a bad one. Pretty funny. Well, funny for me. I kind of felt bad in the end, but we'll get to it. Watch out, guys. Make a hole. This feed, it's like a sawdust grind up like a cornmeal with protein in it. And... They don't like eating it out of that feeder, that gravity feeder. So I decided I'm just gonna start dumping trays of it like this. 
Last night, it was about nine o'clock at night, I came out here and I filled that bad boy up by, uh, I think the kids got home about four o'clock, 3.30 actually, it was 3.30. That sucker was empty, completely empty. And so we filled it up again. They are burning through this food if I feed them in this bowl. I filled that up at nine o'clock as well. And it is barely touched. So I think the reason they haven't been getting this big very fast is because they weren't eating because they don't like the feeder that they're, it's coming out of. So I'll know next time, I'll just dump it out and let them eat out of the bucket. But all right, the radio thing. <laughs> So, for those who've been following my channel, I have been doing Christian talk radio since the raccoons killed our turkeys. Try to save the lives of all our 49 meat birds that we have here because we have quite a bit of money invested. You know, when I mean kind of quite a bit of money, we're like, you know, not too bad. But you don't want the raccoons that eat all your, kill all your chickens because they kill them for fun. So, it was suggested play a radio in the background and keep the raccoons away. So that's what I've been doing. I've been playing Christian talk radio at night, keeping, trying to keep these raccoons away. Well, last weekend, I want to say it was Friday night. <clears throat> I have this thing turned up. Oh, you guys heard it. It was just on. It wasn't up that loud. But apparently, I, I kind of forgot, and I, sh I should know this, is at night, sound travels a little bit further and easier through the cool night air. So the sound will carry further distance. Well, my neighbor, he uh, he was out, he had his he has girls that were camping in the backyard, and he texted me, and I'm at a friend's house, and he says, hey Mike, is there any way you can turn the stereo down? We're camping in the backyard tonight, and <clears throat> it's, uh, you know, all we can hear is the gospel. And I kind of chuckled, and I'm like, well, I'm at my friend's house, I'll be sure to turn it down, and, I thought maybe he was giving me a hard time because I figured you probably could hear it just a little bit. So when I came home later that night, it was pretty much blaring through the woods and I felt so bad. I was like, ooh, man. And it was late, y'all. It was real late at night when I came home. I came down here and I looked at that volume thinking, well, maybe my son, maybe my son turned it up. So maybe somebody turned, somehow it got turned up. I don't know. It was at the same volume set point it was when I left. And then it dawned on me. That noise will travel further and more clear and louder at night than it will during the day. So, oh man, I felt horrible. At one time I thought he was jerking my chain. And the other time I was like, came in and I was like, oh, I bet they enjoyed sleeping outside. Listening to my talk radio until they fell asleep. But apparently their cats kept them up all night pulling out their tent so we're not too bad but i don't know we got one week today is the 16th of june and we are processing on the morning 10 o'clock a.m morning of the 23rd i think i discovered that meeting out of this tray just in time i called duncan's up and asked them if there was a way that I could possibly find out if we could push, if there's a way we could push this process date just a week. And uh, very understanding, they were very understanding. And they looked and people really want my process date because they got older birds and I kind of want one further down the line. I called and see if they had somebody who maybe lost their flock of chickens or something and they don't need to process, process anymore. But no dice, we are committed to the 23rd. Duncan said they would call me up if there was cancellation, but highly doubt it. So these guys, they're going to freezer camp on the 23rd. We actually had to buy a deep freezer. We had to buy a deep freezer, people. Not that nothing's wrong with the one we have. It's just we have a lot of meat coming our way. Uh, not only on the 23rd are we processing all 49 chickens, but we are picking up our half a uh, half of beef on the 27th, which is that Saturday. Yes, which is that Saturday. So I gotta put a half cow and 50, roughly 50 meat beards. Oh, we're not gonna get you. 
We're not gonna process you, huh, bud? Nope. So, 48 meat birds are going to freezer camp. And then half beef. So we bought another deep freeze because mama likes buying popsicles and stuff. I don't want to talk about it. It's a sensitive subject, but see this? I walked away and I didn't even hook the fence up. Closed it all up. So it was a good thing I came back to check on this. Whew, that would have been bad. Could have been so close and would have lost all our meat birds. I don't know if it's just me or not, but Cornish Cross chickens remind me of cotton balls. Just, <laughs> just randomly spread out everywhere. Just cotton balls all over the place. But, all right, I gotta get this radio turned back on. Watch out, guys. Watch out. A lot of people, but it is all right. We got the radio back on, and you got you cotton balls. Everybody gives you guys a bad name. They call you sea monsters, they call you dinosaurs, savages. That escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand. Yeah, me. back with the goat patches. You guys haven't seen our goats or no one or your first time subscriber i'll link a, a video up top here so you can check out our goats but one thing i realized there's not a whole lot of videos about this uh condition that happens with little weathers after you uh you ban them they don't have a testosterone apparently is what i read up on to fully let their we'll call it shwang wang grow out and it kind of seals up at the tip and that's what they call the pizzle and that's what you got to snip off and trust me a big shout out and a big thank you to uh goats tips and tricks on facebook those people there were so supportive and they were on top of it and they're checking on on me and giving me kinds of information and they weren't just like the folks that like to hear themselves talk and comment and stuff and there's nothing wrong with that but it was good die hard information they knew exactly what it was they walked me through it and they followed up to make sure that i wasn't having any problems that's good that's a good community right there so oh man it's hot, it's hot. But we think he's in the clear. We're not really sure yet, but we might have to take him to the vet just to make sure. He is going to the bathroom. He is now peeing a stream where before it was just a, a drip and he was risking rupturing his bladder, a very painful, painful way to die. And uh, we were caught it early on. So thank God. All right. <clears throat> That's all I have for you guys today. I'm sorry it was kind of a weird video. Not really typically my norm. But like I said, it's been a really busy week. And I really felt like I needed to put something out there on these meat chickens because they're going to freezer camp next week. And we don't want to miss out on that. And I'm going to try to videotape as much as I can of the process of picking up our beef and what half a beef looks like. So, and what it looks like in a freezer. So, with these times that we live in now, where at least by me, beef is 450 a pound for hamburger. Yes, it's time to start buying local folks. And uh, this is what I'm gonna try to show you to make that process easier for you. So I appreciate you guys watching and I hope to see you on the next episode of Sunny Slope Homestead. Thanks guys.